Honorable Yusuf Tanko Sununu, representing Ingaski Shanga and the Awuri Federal Constituency of Cape State. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me start by thanking and congratulating our colleagues today for being proactive to save the life of Nigerians and especially those of us who are in practice of nursing. We do know that whenever there is an emergency outbreaks, the first victims after the patients are healthcare providers in the country. We are all aware and we can remember that let Dr. Adediba sacrifice her life to serve this country. And I think this house deserves to commend her for a national honor because she has sacrificed her life to prevent what can be what could have been described as catastrophe in Nigeria when we had the cases of Ebola in Nigeria. Now, sir, it's always amazing one that as Nigerians, we have a condition that was first diagnosed in Nigeria in 1969, when virtually I myself am not even in primary school. But say that we are still living with burden of such disease, it shows how uh, we took our personal and collective health into consideration. I believe if it is in other country, Lassa fever will have been known in our archives, we have forgotten about it. But still, it's one of the major emerging and emerging diseases in the country. The mode of transmi uh, transmission is known, causative organisms are known, up till now, even the emergency care is not readily available. Mr. Speaker, you can, be with, you can believe with me. In most of our tertiary hospitals today, when we said we have a case of Lassa fever on admission in our emergency room, a lot may not go close to that emergency center. What is the reason? The basic for personal pro protective equipment that is supposed to be used are not there available. As it is now, we are supposed to be the center in Nigeria. We, have, we should supposed to have a center that is guiding, developing protocol for the management of Lassa fever. But up to now, how many centers do we have of excellence to treat Lassa fever? Diagnosis, confirmation of diagnosis is not readily available. I think in my zone, the Northwest, I'm not sure of any center that can confirm case of Lassa fever. It means even before you can apply all the necessary protective measures, you must wait until you have the diagnosis, definitive diagnosis. But we are encouraged to use our basic knowledge to have higher index of suspicion so that we can protect the life of practitioners and also the life of other patients within that environment. So I think, sir, we must take this as a serious issue. Lassa fever is a reality. It's having a lot of toll and killing many in Nigeria. A disease that you normally hear before in some isolated pocket areas now is becoming a pandemic disease. This should not be allowed to stand. So I think this house must urge the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and Ministry of Health to make sure that the one, less, at least one percent of basic healthcare provision fund that is also uh, included in 2019 budget, the aspect of emergency must be utilized properly to make sure that big teams are not left on their own. We must have capacity, skills on how to handle base, uh, patients that came and we have higher index of suspicion. Personal protective equipment must be made readily available in, most, in all of our tertiary health center because while you are trying to protect, to intervene, you must also be sure that you can protect yourself. I must emphasize the aspect of isolation. When we isolate, we quarantine, I think, and we also have readily available skill to intervene, I think we can call uh, this thing. 
And I think also, sir, finally, I want to say, both malaria and Lassa fever, we must have a multi-sectorial approach. Ministry of Environment, Health, Water Resources must all come together so that we can collaborate to fight these common uh, uh, problems for, uh, in, in Nigeria. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity.